Welcome everyone to WWE Bragging Rights. My name is Boy One Two Three Jim, Jim for short, and I will be reviewing both Raw and SmackDown. That's what this platform is all about. I review both Raw and SmackDown of this week, and I will determine which show was better out of the two this week. So we're gonna begin with Monday Night Raw. So Monday Night Raw was live in Los Angeles, California, the city of angels. In the Staples Center, we started off with. Kurt Angle leading the charge of the You Suck chants of the crowd. He comes out, welcomes us to the show, along with Cole, Booker T, and Corey Graves. And then he plugs about the Raw Tag Team title match between Ambrose and Rollins against The Bar. I really love The Bar now. Like, I, re I didn't like them before, but now it, they grew on me, and I love The Bar. I just want to say that. But yeah, he plugs that, and then he brings up about the Intercontinental Championship. Uh, with Roman Reigns saying that Roman Reigns defended last week against Elias, you know, due to, due to the open challenge. So he's going to do it again tonight, and I will announce who will it be. And then Jason Jordan comes out. Now I'm thinking, oh, Lord, here we go. But then when he comes out, he's like, oh, I can beat Roman Reigns, you know. He's like, I want Roman Reigns tonight. And then Kurt Angle trying to play up with his knees, like, we're not doing this again, are we? Are we doing this again? What, what about your knee? Your knee, Jordan. And then Jordan's like, look, it's fine. Even though last week, he's he, he's going in and out, or two weeks ago, rather. He's going in and out about, oh, you know, it's fine. It's not fine. Yeah, I, I don't get you, Jordan. But he comes out and says, look, I can handle Roman Reigns, all right? I was able to handle John Cena. I've been in, I've been in the ring with John Cena, Kane, Braun Strowman. And Roman Reigns and The Miz. And each, in each of those matches, I was able to hold my own. So I know I can beat Roman Reigns tonight. While he's talking, everybody in Los Angeles, in that arena, in the Staples Center, all 14,000, 13,000 people there, was booing the hell out of Jason Jordan. So, Jordan as a heel sounds a good idea to me, and it's starting to come through. Right? So then... Uh, so Jordan issues a cha issues a challenge, or he answered the challenge uh, of Roman Reigns' open challenge for the Intercontinental Championship. He uh, he, re he reiterate what Roman Reigns said last week that if you want the opportunity to step up, then step up and take it. You know, step up and take the challenge, right? And then who comes out? The big dog comes out. Roman Reigns comes out. Mixed reaction. Some people like to play on that. Oh, you're still getting booed. You're still getting booed. Well, I mean, every, almost everybody gets booed, fam. Almost everybody. So, but I mean, yeah, he's not. Oh, he's not over as a babyface. But then again, he still gets a reaction. So, uh, that now I'm at that point where, like, if you get a reaction, that's all that matters. If you get no reaction, fam, sit down. You know. So Roman comes out and he's like, "Look, I'm a fighting champion. I know what I said." But I'm not fighting your son here. I want Samoa Joe. The crowd pop. Now, Samoa Joe is from California. His home, he his his home state is California, right? So I understand why the pops were coming through for Joe. But I mean, I mean, he's over anyway, so he'll get a pop wherever he goes. But at the same time, you know, if you when you get if you're over and you're in your home state or hometown. The pop gets louder, obviously. So when Joe, uh, Joe comes out later on, right? So Roman kept saying, "Yeah, I'm not about this with Jordan. You know, I want Joe. I don't want Jason." And then Jordan was like, "Fam, what's your like? Are you trying to duck me, fam?" And then Roman Reigns, is, Roman Reigns said to him, and I remember when he said this. He's like, "Look, if you want an opportunity, you gotta earn it. Don't be running to your daddy." And then he had the most smug. Like smile, the the biggest smug of a smile I've ever seen in my life. In Roman Reigns, he's like, you hear them laughing at you. He's like, yeah, just step up and take it or earn it or something like that, right? And then Jordan, well, Jordan went on to say, are you gonna give me a lecture about earning opportunities? Yet yeah, you're the guy, you are the poster boy for what WWE management wants. Even though I swear, a certain 16 time made that loud and clear. I think millions of fans over the past 
three to four years have made that clear. Anyways, um, then Jason Jordan comes, uh, sorry, Samoa Joe comes out, and he's like, look, I would love to sit back and watch you two puff out your chests and try to act tough, but my patience is running thin. Now, Roman, if you're done patronizing the kids, says Joe, I accept your chest. The way how he, sp he speaks, his delivery in his promos is so, I, I just love his swagger. When he speaks, Samoa Joe, when you talk, I listen, fam. Like, seriously, it's just great. Right, so like, he accepts the challenge, and then he says, eh, you know what, because I am merciful at times, I'm going to give you five seconds to withdraw your challenge to avoid embarrassment, because you know you can't beat me. And the way how he said that, it just, Samoa Joe is becoming a legend in the making no doubt i tweeted that on uh, monday night and then jordan laughs and he's like whoa, whoa whoa i don't have to come out here and talk tough and i don't have to come out and attack people from behind unlike you joe all right because i'm able to come out here and challenge roman reigns to his face and right now i'm out here challenging you to your face the way he speaks i really can't take him seriously I, I I understand he's serious, but I can't take him seriously. I was laughing when he said all that. I'm like, am I the only one that's not taking this guy seriously when he speaks? He sounds like a spoiled bastard child. That's what he sound like to me. And right when what but like when when Jordan was talking, did you see Roman Reigns' reaction when he looked back at Jordan like, boy, if you don't back up, <laughs> that was funny, fam. But yeah. Jordan just went on to talk crap about uh, towards Joe, and Roman just told him to back up and stay in his lane. And then Roman was like, "All right, then." Forget, like Roman, Roman just straight out, straight up, just said, "Look, forget your your uh, your thing about five seconds to withdraw withdraw the challenge." All right, I'm facing you tonight. And then Jordan decides to belly to belly suplex him in Roman Reigns, and then Roman just got up and he's like, "Nah." It ain't going down like that. Jordan, me and you, right now. You can get it now. Joe, I'll get you later. But sadly, that didn't happen. So then the match happened. Great Intercontinental Championship match. I expected Jason Jordan to deliver in this match. And he did. He held his own. Even though he was selling the left leg injury, right? Still able to uh, be good in that match. That shows... How good Jason Jordan is in the ring. It's just that as far as character and personality goes, yeah, that's the problem with Jordan. But when it comes to in ring, I would never question Jason Jordan as far as in ring goes. Okay, he's, he's his strength is unbelievable, and the way he just moves in the ring is just great. Roman Reigns, I saw him tweet uh, the other day saying uh, he's the greatest or best performer in the world today. Um, he has the right to his own opinion. I disagree with what he said, but I will agree with the fact that he has delivered over the past couple of years. Uh, some of my favorite matches involves him. So him, uh, him being the best in the in the ring today, I disagree with that wholeheartedly because I know Roman Reigns' moveset and it's not that impressive. I mean, the way how he delivers it, yeah, it's good, but the just looking at it overall, it's just not like screams ah, you know. I don't, I don't need a wrestler to do outside dives like the cruiserweights do, but I mean, I'm a tech. My favorite style of wrestling is technical. Technical wrestling is my cup of tea, fam. That's why I love a guy like a Benoit, uh, an Angle, you know, AJ Styles, a Chad Gable. I'm the only one that said. Chad Gable versus AJ Styles is a dream match to me. A technical wrestling dream match. I'm the only one that said that. I know it for a fact. So the match happens anyway. And then, yeah, great match. Jordan, uh, Jordan did two Northern Lights suplexes even though his leg was still messed up. Roman did some damage to the leg. Did a single leg Boston grab. I don't think I've ever seen Roman Reigns done that before. And then, you know, Roman Reigns does the Superman punches a lot. And... Yeah, it's kind of predictable that he's not going to hit the, the spear every time he goes for the ooh -ah, and You know, like, it's, yeah, yeah. But, but, but I like it when he hits a spear out of nowhere. Like, he just, you just see him running and just, boom, catches you with the spear. 
takes down Jordan, one, two, three, match is over. But the, the best thing about this match is that Samoa Joe, like a fucking, like, like he's a, like a part of the mafia or he's, or he's a hitman or something. He's just sitting on the chair watching his prey. Just watching him, you know, just waiting for the right opportunity to strike. And then the second the match was done, it's like, good. You know, the kid did some damage to you. So I'm going to finish what he started, and I'm going to put you straight to sleep. And he came into the ring, put him in the coquita clutch, but then Jordan came through, hit a back suplex on the Joe, which was weird. And then Roman Reigns is like, oh yeah, I, for I didn't forget about that uh, that that suplex uh, Superman hose to his face. And that was it. Then after that, from the break, Kurt Angle on the phone. Why is Kurt Angle on the phone all the time? Like, God dang. He was on the phone with Stephen McMahon. Stephen McMahon probably complaining about what happened in the beginning of the show. And then Kurt says he'll fix everything, get under control. Jordan gets in the room and he demands another shot at Roman Reigns for the Intercontinental title next week. Angle was like, bro, who, who are you to, de de to demand stuff from me, huh? Who are you? I'm the general manager, you know? Why don't you get out my office and cool off, right? And then Jordan tried to ask uh, for a match with Joe. And Angle's like, fine, I'll consider giving you the match, all right? Relax, go and cool off. He's about to go. And then somehow, Samoa Joe got in there and just dropped Jason Jordan. And then he just started getting all up in his face. He's all fired up. He's like, ha, ah, ah, ha, what's good? What's good, huh? What's good, huh? You, you want to talk crap? What's good? And he's like, huh? What's good, Angle? Huh? Like father, like son, right? Right, Kurt? That, that, that line was funny. That line was, oh yeah, and, 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 and uh, to bring up something in the in the beginning, in the promo, right? I remember when uh, JC Jordan was like, oh, you're the poster boy of WWE management. And then Robert Reigns is like, well, you're right. You, you got one thing right. I, I am on a, a lot of posters. I mean, that part killed me. <laughs> that part killed me. He's like, this guy's such a cock prick. Oh, if he was a heel, oh lord, we will all be lo we will all be riding him right now. Pause, but we will all be riding that Roman Reigns train. You know what I mean? But I mean, I'm just a fan. I mean, I just tell you like it is. Uh, so that, that's what that's that's just it with me. After that, we have Paige taking out Sasha Banks. I was actually a little bit hyped for this match because, I mean, in a way, it's, I mean, this did happen around the time before Paige went on her one year. BS with everything with the leak stuff and and, and, and and you know the thing with El Patron right all that crap and being suspended at the, yeah being suspended uh, all within that one year within the last year you know like these these two did have a match before last year it's been a while but nice to see them two back in the ring the match was good just that the crowd didn't help I mean, Michael Cole on commentary was more entertaining to me than the match itself. Michael Cole, just, I felt like he was going through his 2002 days and started just shitting on Alexa Bliss for running away, you know, when uh, Absolution came through and uh, did damage to Mickey James and Bailey last week. Like, it was just funny. But yeah, the match, I'm not going to deny how great it was in ring. The match was great. The fans got electric. By the end of the match, which is sad because the in ring wise it was great, you know, some technical and chain wrestling at the beginning, you know, start hitting some big moves in the middle, and then, you know, now started to do some desperate moves out of their arsenal, and then in the end, got some distractions from members of the Absolution, and then Page with the Page Rampage DDT for the win. So, yes, I will say the match was great, just that Michael Cole just made me laugh more than me entertaining in the match itself because well the crowd didn't help uh, and I thought Los Angeles was going to be a great crowd because you know it's a big city you know and the, and Lucid Underground was in uh, in the California area I think it was in Los Angeles I don't know in the temple so I thought you know maybe you know uh, Paige and Sasha Banks would be their cup of tea but I guess not because it took them for a long ass time to get into the match. So we're backstage, Kurt Angle on his phone, again, texting or looking on Google Maps or whatever he was doing, and a guy with a guitar who knows how to play it right, Elias comes through, and he says he wants another shot at Roman Reigns. The fact that people are coming out here and asking for another shot at the Intercontinental Championship really tells me that if The Miz had the title, they wouldn't be doing this at all. It really does tell me. They would have pushed 
someone we don't care about and then maybe win the title but then nothing will happen after that I mean the fact that Roman Reigns is gonna I in quote from other people bury everyone on the roster I mean at least we're getting exciting matches out of it I don't mind him winning too often uh, or a lot or every time as long as the matches are exciting if they're if they're great let me look at the matches with AJ Styles he had I mean I wanted AJ Styles to win and I hated Roman at that point because well he, he lost it out the rumble that he regained it you know ugh. but when he had the match with AJ Styles it's one of my favorite matches of that year but I don't like the fact that Roman won but match is still great so that's 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 where I'm at with Roman it's like I don't I don't I don't like it that you're gonna beat my favorite people but in the end dude if you're gonna bring the match to a, to a, a good match then screw it so yeah Elias is asking for the uh, intercontinental title but then uh, Angle, but then he, he brings up that Angle gave it to his son, his bastard son, as he called him. Said that people in LA wants to walk with Elias, but since he has no worthy opponent, they're only going to get a concert. And he goes on and warns, and warns Kurt Angle about his bias towards his bastard son. And Angle says, you know, go have your concert, I'll find a worthy opponent for you. After that, we come back, we have Enzo with the Soul Train backstage talking about better seizing the opportunity. You know, knocks on Dar and Davari for losing last week. Then said that, well, you know, Gulak and Nice, I believe, have to do better to represent him, you know. And then after that, Nia Jax comes through. And then she's like standing there and it just starts smiling and saying, uh, how you doing? I'm like, Nia, <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, Naya? What's good, fam? Are you digging Enzo? Are you smelling what he's cooking? I, I, I know she. I said it because she's related to the rock. I, I'm sorry. That, that, that. I'm sorry. Anyways, I'm not sorry. Fatal Four with Cruiserweight match. <laughs> winner faces Rich Swan. Winner, winner will face the Cruiserweight champ in Enzo Amore. We have Nice, Gulak, Mustafa, and Cedric. Oh my god, what a match. I, I don't know if this was equal to last week's match or this topped last week's match. This Fatal Forward match was so good. I remember a part in the match. Cedric, uh, he did a back suplex. Uh, 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 nice countered. And then he did a, a nasty forearm to the face of Cedric. And then Mustafa Ali did a, a, a roll-in face plant. And then uh, Gulak hit a hilarious, a nasty clothesline onto uh, Mustafa Ali. Then Cedric hit a, a, a springboard flying clothesline onto Gulak. My god. You really need to go watch this match if you did not see it. And then, in the end, uh, Cedric hit the... Uh, the uh, lumbar check onto Tony Nice, but he went out to the outside and he hits it on Mustafa Ali. And then Gulak hits a running knee, which look a little bit weak, I'm not gonna lie. And he hits a running knee, takes out Cedric, and then covers Ali for the W. I'll, uh, Gulak versus Swan. I will. I would have rather see Cedric versus uh, Swan. I mean, that match just speaks money to me, in my honest opinion. But that's besides the point. In the end, Gulak is the winner of this fatal four way. So then, uh, after that, he wanted to show his PowerPoint presentation, but we're out of time because, well, Elias is making his way towards the ring. So then we have Elias, he sings his beautiful song, takes shots at LA, and then Braun Strowman comes out. And, well, he just beat the crap out of Elias. Plain and simple. Elias tries to run, he tries to fight, he tries to fight Braun Strowman with his back turned, but in the end, he gets a power slam for his trouble. And then, well, we hear a sound effect, because Kane is on the screen, on the, that little-ass banner, not a Titantron, that's a banner with the little square screen. A, a Titantron is what they had last year or two years ago. Now what they got is just a freaking banner with a little-ass screen. That ain't no Titantron. I'm sorry. So yeah, Kane, yeah, he just goes on and on and on, saying that he likes pain. What a freak. So, and then he just, in the end, he just says that him and Braun are going to fight next week. Pretty much. I would have loved, and he said that he will ascend, he, that they will ascend into the abyss next week. But only one monster will emerge as he laughs and he walks away. Even though the camera went back to the screen and Kane is walking off. It's like, oh, shit, but you weren't supposed to see me. But okay. 
<laughs> I would have loved it if they had a stipulation in this match. You know, I would have liked it if, uh, I don't know. Infernal match. Or, or Ring of Fire, whichever the one you would prefer. A steel cage. Uh, no disqualification. Anything but a stairs match. Um, that is the worst match ever created in WWE. That is worse or on par with the freaking pole matches that WCW created back in the day. Just saying. That's just me. Anyway. Um, chill backstage. Roman said he did his part. He has the title, but the Rollins and Ambrose, they don't. And then Rollins like, come on, that's not fair. I mean, the bar got the job done because, well, you know, New Day interfered, but we beat the best survivors. So they're still bringing that up. And then, yeah, Ambrose is like surprised that the rematch is happening tonight or at that night, even though he's been away for a week. And Rollins is like, uh, dude, like, have you, haven't you, like, used your phone? And Roman's like, dude, he doesn't even use the internet. It's like, <laughs> okay. It's like, yeah, that may be true. He, he has Twitter, but yeah. I follow him on Twitter, but yeah, he doesn't, I don't see his tweets, so I guess he doesn't tweet at all. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think Ambrose is an internet type of guy. It's not an internet mark. <clears throat> Anyways, um, they plugged Cena being on the Fallon show and the Today Show for Wednesday and Thursday, and promoted uh, to promote his new animation movie will be coming out this month. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I heard one of them congratulate John Cena. I'm like, Man, this at this point is it really a congratulations? If they want high ratings, I think Jimmy Fallon and and the Today Show are not stupid. To not have Cena on their show eventually, you know? So, I mean, he is an attraction, whether you like him or not. Fox takes on Oscar. Fox get a, uh, get a better match than Dana Brooke, because Dana Brooke lost within six seconds, you know? So, but yeah, Alicia Fox, she, she tries to fight her, but in the end, Oscar with the W, able to get the job done, you know? I don't know. I didn't watch the match. It says that, it says that here that she took... Fox down with an arm bar and got the job done, so. I mean, I didn't watch the match because I knew Oscar was going to win. There's no point in me watching the fucking match now, you know? If it's if it's against someone that's not like a Banks or a Paige or a Bailey or a Mickey James, something like that, or a Bliss, why am I going to watch it? Why am I going to watch it, you know? Unless I'm in the mood for it, which I barely am, so. Eh. After that, Paige comes out and they surround Oscar just like they did last week, and then that's pretty much it. And then Paige grabs the mic and says, you know, I don't wanna I'm not here to hurt Foxy. I actually like Foxy. Me and her are friends, you know. You know, like me and her Like she's my friend and she's been a friend for like a year now. We've been friends for like a year, you know. She's my bestie and I love Foxy. But I don't think Sonya and and Mandy feel the same way. And then they got into the ring and what happens? They fight. So that's it. Pretty much it. And then Paige yells like like how Triple H does, you know, We are Absolution! You know, so. After that, we have um, Finn Balor taking on Bold House. Nothing much. Nice to see Bold House in action. I do feel like an extra championship will do them well, but that's me. That's just my opinion. But we'll, we'll, it will do guys like Bo Dallas, Tyler Sunil, Apollo Crews, you know. Guys who's not getting an opportunity or not getting TV time at all. You know, give them TV time. Like, that's that's what I do. That's what I did for the uh, television championship on Universe World to give guys some TV time. So, in the end, Finn Balor got the job done. Coup de Gras for the W. Pretty much. Uh, yeah. And then if then they reiter they reiterated how the new day helped the bar to uh, win the tag titles by distraction towards Ambrose and Rollins playing and simple. After that we get to one of the best parts, if not the best part of the show. They show us about Matt Hardy's post post match breakdown after last week when he lost to Bray Wyatt. And then they show Matt Hardy's bizarre tweets, right? And then Bray Wyatt comes on and he starts talking about how Matt Hardy, like, who is Matt Hardy? We don't know. Like, we know who he is. I know who he is. But I don't think he knows who he is. And then Matt Hardy, you know, he starts coming out. Ah, uh, yeah. And starts talking broken stuff, you know. And then Bray Wyatt does his thing. And then Matt Hardy does his thing. And then back and forth. And, and then 
Matt Hardy says, I have been looking at, you know. And then uh, Matt Hardy also said that, you know, I had this vessel known as Matthew Hardy, but now I am woken, you know. And now, and then he brings up that, you know, he sentenced Bray Wyatt to deletion. And then now we, now we got to wait for the match. Oh, I cannot wait for the match. Matt Hardy's going to go full, it's going to go full woken. And the reason why he's called Woken, Matt Hardy, not Broken, is because, well, WWE wants to own that name. That way, when Matt Hardy goes to other places, they don't have to go back and forth about the damn gimmick. Like how Impact Wrestling did. So, it was a great segment overall. I'm not going to go over it because I want to go too long. I got to review SmackDown right after. And then the main event, great main event. Even though we've seen this a bunch of times. Just like last week, we've seen Seth Rollins and Cesaro many, many times. But still a great match. Um... The, the bar got themselves disqualified because of Sheamus, and Kurt Angle came out and then said, No, nah, we're not ending this like, we're not ending it like this. You, you call yourself the bar? Well, set an example. How about um, we restart this match and we'll make it a no disqualification match? And then, you know, they go at it again. Rollins and Neville's got some offense. They're in control of the match. And then Samoa Joe gets involved, and then he takes down Rollins and Dean Ambrose. Roman Reigns comes out. He gets in the ring. Joe runs to the crowd. Roman hits a Superman hose onto Cesaro, and then, so uh, as Roman going after uh, Joe outside, Sheamus did a bro kick on Dean Ambrose and pins uh, Dean Ambrose in Cesaro. He he puts Cesaro on top of Dean Ambrose to win and retain the tag team championships. And that's how Raw ended with Joe and the bar in the crowd and Roman looking on like. You sneaky mofos. I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you. And that was Monday Night Raw. So let's begin SmackDown Live Review. Now we begin SmackDown Live Review as we were live in San Diego, California, beginning the show finally with a change, even though it's the same format. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn come out, and they're bragging about how they defeated, uh, you know, Randy Orton, you know, how they overcame Shane McMahon's antics, uh, how they were able to pull a fast one over McMahon because of Sami Zayn was barred from ringside, ringside, not the stage, not the ramp, ringside, so they're, they thought the way how I thought last week, um, very smart, and used their brains, simple, right, and they're saying that they're being a target, you know, from, uh, the McMahons or Daniel Bryan or both, uh, bringing up you know guys like Daniel Bryan, Bret Hart, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Even though and then then they claim that they're better than all of them that they just mentioned, all in combined. Uh, that you know whenever they feud with the McMahon, the McMahon family would do nothing but just pound the flesh out of their targets, as they said, and then. You know, they call they said that Randy Orton is a puppet. You know, whenever Randy Orton's with the McMahons, Randy Orton gets something. He gets many, many opportunities, which is true. I mean, look at twenty third, look at two thousand thirteen. Randy Orton has won three WWE championship or not or two WWE championship or four three to four championship matches that year. He won it at SummerSlam when he cashed in, and then he won a Hell in the Cell, and then he won at TLC. Think about that. Three title matches, and he won. Think about that. And in 2017, well, well, I mean, him and Shane are not... I mean, he had many matches against Mahal at the time, so maybe that counts, I guess. I don't know. But in the end, you know, McMahon tried to use Orton to, to end their careers, but, you know, the plan didn't work. You know, simple as that. And then Sami Zayn went outside and it just starts to, uh, you know, do, said what I've been saying for the past week, you know, pointing out that, you know, you know, outside the ring is ringside. After you pass a certain line from the stage and the ramp towards the ring, you know, there's a difference, you know. And then Sami Zayn just kept ragging on the crowd. And then Kevin Owens was just standing there saying, check and check and double check, triple check. And then what Kevin Owens didn't check was Randy Orton RKOing his ass in the ring. Out of nowhere. That was definition of out of nowhere. The only bad thing from JBL 
on commentary that I can remember recently. Whenever Randy Orton hits an RKO, first of all, he always says it only takes one, which is bullshit. And then number two, he all, and then they always say out of nowhere. I, I mean, you if he's if he's coiling up and he's he pounding the mat, don't you think he's setting up for an RKO and you're seeing it coming? That what he did yesterday was out of nowhere. True definition. And then Shane McMahon came to, comes out, and then he says, You two think I have a personal vendetta against you? Well, he hesitated, and then he said, Nah, you're wrong. You're wrong. So, you, you guys complain that, you know, you weren't featured at Survivor Series. Well, in two weeks' time, a Clash of Champions, you will, be, you will be featured. It will be you two against the Viper, Randy Orton, and a partner of his choosing. And, well, Sammy Sam says you like to, you know, brag about what you did last week. How about tonight? It'll be you with your friend Kevin Owens. He could be at ringside. And actually, I actually want him at ringside because he'll be tied. He'll be handcuffed onto the bottom rope. And it'll be you guys versus the Viper, Randy Orton. As he points him, he points out that Randy Orton's in the ring. He's the Viper, Randy Orton. You know, and that's pretty much it. I expected that to happen. I actually said that in my uh, Clash of Champions matches. Uh, an announced video, wrestling discussion video, where they announced, uh, you know, uh, three extra matches on the show. You know, I expected that to happen where Randy Orton would be involved in a match with uh, Sami Zayn and or Kevin Owens. And it's going to be a tag match, which I expected that too. So, yeah. They announced that Corbin would take on the which would have been a match at Clash of Chance, but they made it a triple threat because reasons. And New Day will take on Ruru and Aiden English. Backstage, we see Sami Zayn and you know, Kevin Owens not happy, obviously. Kevin Owens is asking Sami, what did Shane say? What did he say? You know, or and then Sami Zayn told him, you know, he'll be at ringside. He'll allowed to be at ringside, but you have to be handcuffed. And Owens is like, no, nah, I, I just got embarrassed by an RKO by Randy Orton. I, I'm going to talk to Daniel Bryan about this. And yeah. After that, we see Ruru and Aiden English in the ring. Aiden English singing about the 12 days of Rusev for Krim. For Christmas. And then I was hoping when he gets to the fourth day of Rusev, I was gonna, that's when the new day would come out and start saying, you know, oh, San Diego, don't you dare be sour, clap for your world famous four time champs, you know, cause four, four time champs, you know, that's what I thought, but not nah, at three, that's when he came out. I'm like, okay. Anyways, they come out. And then the match happens. I kind of fast forward. You know, Kofi Kingston, one of my favorites in the ring. You know, I honestly felt like 2009, if he didn't fuck up, uh, he would have gotten a main event push, to be honest. I mean, 2009, dude, he was at he was at a, he was at a top point of his career at that point uh, in 2009. But sadly, he had to mess up a, at a, on a spot. I really, I, I'm still confused on that situation. And yeah. Wish uh, that didn't happen. But anyway, yeah, the match happens. In the end, I just see Rusev kicking Kofi in the back of the head. One, two, three. Rusev and Aiden English beats the New Day. And then I'm thinking to myself, eh, maybe, you know, since the New Day defeated Benjamin and Gable last week, um, maybe they're going to be added into the match. I kind of, I, I, I just said that out of, out, of, out of thin air, out of nowhere. I just said that, I'm like, you know what, maybe they might do that. They might add Rusev uh, and in English to the match because, well, you know, knew they did the same thing last week, right? And, well, what happens? Uh, after, what was it? After a while, they announced it that it will be a fatal four-way tag team title match. Now, yes, another multi-band match. Blah, blah, blah. I understand. I have no problem with it overall because, well, I feel like they're gonna kill it. You know, Rusev and Aiden English. That's an interesting uh, duo, uh, along with New Day, who's gonna kill it. That uh, at Clash of Champions, no doubt about it. Um, along with the technical style and the high flying mix with Gable and Benjamin. I mean, fam, do you really want to question that? And we have the tag champs who are the poor at the best point of their career right now. I'm not going to complain about the match. It's just, yes, I know. It's another multi-man match. But if it has the people that can make the match match of the year, then 
Yeah! Mm, I'm not gonna question it as much. So, uh, after that we have Mojo talking about why he did what he did last week. Saying that, you know, when Mojo, when Ryder got hurt, you know, people say, people, people are upset what he did. Uh, what, people are upset at Mojo for what he did to Ryder last week. Even his boy, Rob Gronkowski. I never ever said his name before. I only know him as Rob or Gronk, whatever the fuck, right? So, uh, you know, they, they all are, are upset about why he's, uh, why he did what he did to his boy. And, by the way, can I just mention that the graphics for Cl uh, Clash of Champions are beautiful as fuck? I love it when they show the graphics of the old championships at the bottom, and then after that, at the top, it's the current. I just love that feature. I, I really do. That, that just, ooh. Ah, oh, man, I just wish it was Night of Champions doing that, and then it's a double-branded show, but anyways. So yeah, Mojo, you know, he just went on and says, look, when Ryder got hurt last year, what happened with me? I was at a good point in my career. Won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. I was getting win after win, things were going my way, but what happened? He came back. And then what happens? He had to run. He basically, he basically said this. He was riding my coattails. See, I'm the superstar here, not him. He came back when I'm at a good point of my career. So he was dead weight. So I had to drop him, and things had to change. I'm a serious competitor, not someone's tag team partner. And then he, issues, he says that he issues a challenge to, to the back and says if anyone doesn't like what he did to Ryder, they can shove it. Plain and simple. I'm interested to see where Mojo, well, what's going to happen with Mojo. I mean, I know much, not much is going to happen with him, but I hope for the best. But we'll see what happens, man. I, I, I wouldn't mind T Mojo as a uh, mid-card champion. And he's a fucking heel. And he's a big-ass douchebag. Just saying. Anyway, uh, backstage we have Daniel Bryan with the females. We got Carmella, Lana, and Tamina. All right, Carmella, they're all complaining of why. Oh, why? Oh, so Natty gets another opportunity. Blah, blah, blah. Lana thinks Tamina deserves a shot, even though Tamina hasn't done dick for all of her career. And to be honest, I'm not Peyton. I'm just telling the truth. Wait till losses to me matter, man. Anyways, um... And Carmella, she wants a shot, even though it's stupid because you have the briefcase. If you get a title shot, it would mean the briefcase is useless. I mean, in, in one point, yes, what I just said is true. But in another point, it's like, well, you got an opportunity. You lose. You have a backup. You know. But I do not want to see. I do not want to see Carmella pull a Seth Rollins 2015, freaking having the Money in the Bank briefcase and then be added to a WWE title match at the Royal Rumble. Just saying. And then, well, Ruby Riot with the two T's comes out with her girls and Sarah Logan, who is the I, who is the the twin of Tail of Tamina, with Liv Morgan. Why do I say twin of Tamina? Because, well, Sarah Logan and Tamina practically identical. You know, they already can't talk on a microphone. I'm not gonna diss them for how they speak, but as far as me. Grasping on what they're trying to say on on the mic. Yeah, mm -mm, not working with me and I can I, I know in the ring They're not good. They're not really good. Maybe some might say Sarah Logan is better than Tamina, but I don't give a damn They're practically identical just saying so there you go. I'm not hating. I'm just telling you how I feel So Yeah, so both sides started arguing live more uh, sorry Ruby Riot with two T's uh, says you know Daniel Bryan, what are you doing? I mean, you brought us up here, and I pinned your champion last week, and yet I'm not added to the match. I actually thought Bryan was actually going to add it to the match, but sadly, he did not. Um, yeah, so she questions why that didn't happen. You know, they came up on the main roster to make a statement, not be afterthoughts like Lana, Carmella, and Tamina has been, which is kind of true. And then they both started going at it, and Bryan... In a funny way, yells with his face turning red. Holy crap! Reminds me of a character in South Park that has his face turned red. It's it's really funny. 
And then he, he, he solves it by saying that all six women will be a part of the championship match at the pay-per-view in a lumberjack match, which is odd because I kind of don't want to see it, though, because, well, a lumberjack match, I mean, what's uh, the last best lumberjack match I can remember was John, uh, no, no, sorry. It was Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins 2014 at SummerSlam. The best SummerSlam or the, or the best uh, lumberjack match in the, the, the WWE history or or recent in the 2010s. All right, so yeah, I just have to say that because I don't think a lumberjack match for these women are gonna do dick. After that, we have backstage of Bobby Roode prepping up for his match against Baron Corbin. Corbin comes in, and they're both discussing why Dolph Ziggler being in the match is BS. And they basically agree with me because I say the same thing. I like Dolph Ziggler. I'm a fan of Dolph Ziggler. I hope for the best that he gets better at one at some point. But in the end, he hasn't done dick. Why is he in this match? It's, it's going to bring excitement as far as wrestling goes, but overall... Why is he in this match? It's so questionable, man. So they're, they're discussing about that and then bringing up how, you know, bringing up mathematical things, you know, saying that, you know, you know, Dolph being in the match, you know, their chances of winning dropped to 33%, blah, blah, blah. And then Dolph comes in and says, look, the reason why I'm in this match because y'all need me. I am that damn good. That is why I'm in, I was put in this match. And then I'll see you guys at Boston. You know. I mean, I'm a former two-time World Heavyweight Champion, former Intercontinental Champion, former United States Champion. And I cashed in my money in the bank. Successfully, and he looks like Corbin when he says that. And then Sigur says, well, both your odds has dropped to zero. And I'll see you both in Boston. After that, we have the Bludgeon Brothers. Oh, I love the Bludgeon Brothers. Plain and simple. They come out. Adam James and Just Carr. You gonna sell me a car? He and James got wrecked. Simple. They got wrecked. They got destroyed, mangled, dismantled, dismembered. They got wrecked. You know, Bludgeon Brothers did the same thing what they did for the past two weeks, but I, I just love how... how just the, the intensity is there for them. And I do see them being the most dominant tag team champions in the WWE today. I do see it. I would, I would actually put the tag titles on the Bludgeon Brothers down the line and let them pass or let them have a long title reign because you know smackdown title smackdown tag team titles has been around for a year now so and i think the usos has the no they don't they only have the title for like a month or or two months now so but yeah i, I think yeah i think the bludger brothers would be the perfect team to have them be the longest reigning tag smackdown live tag team champions on smackdown or in wwe overall i think the bludger brothers are the best of doing that. Just saying. Uh, so after that, you know, they're walking away, and then Sami Zayn backstage with Orange ask if uh, if Brian's gonna do anything about it, and Orange says, "Look, I speak to I speak to Daniel, and he says he'll think about it," which I knew for a fact was not going to happen. You know. After that, we have Bobby Roode versus Baron Corbin. God, I love Baron Corbin's theme song. Oh, I've been listening to it for a, at least a month now. So, don't judge me. Anyways, Corbin and Roode. Match was eh. And then Dolph got in, got involved and zigzags and the fans were booing. Uh, I, yeah, the fans were booing Dolph Ziggler because everybody don't like Dolph Ziggler because he doesn't change. Dolph Ziggler's like me right now. Does not change. So complacent. Needs a change to be better. But in the end, it's not gonna change. Yeah. I don't know why I said that, but it's kinda true. After that, we have uh, Natalia. Oh, fuck. I, look, I really don't like it when Natalia speaks. I just find her really annoying. 
when she speaks. Oh my god. She reminds me of my little sister, man. I, it, it really... Ah, it's like when she speaks, it's like, I don't want to hear you speak. Please. Don't speak. Ah, uh, anyways. The, she talks... She's trying to butter up Carmella, Lana, and Tamina. Brings up the awful faction known as the Welcoming Committee. I ain't forget about that, mother... I ain't forget about that. Well, she brings that up. And then... The rat squad comes through and she does the same thing, you know, butters up them, and then she just I just skipped it. I just fast forward and she walked away. Simple. And then they have they had to face off the right squad with two T's uh uh against uh, the welcoming community, I guess. I don't I don't know. Then we have Charlotte versus Tamina. I skipped towards the end. Well, Charlotte who who do you think won? Figure eight, done deal. And then the 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 Natalia got the microphone says you know I that that class of champions rather I'm gonna be coming champion again blah 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 but we're gonna give you a preview of what's gonna happen at class of champions and then the right squad comes out says Natty I agree with you you know at class of champions Charlotte you know Charlotte's gonna see a preview of the lumberjack match. And what a way to do it, what a better way to do it without, with uh, the main people of the movie. And she comes out, and then Liv Morgan talks, and Sarah Logan speaks, and in the end, there was a little mini brawl between Sarah Logan and Tamina. Now, I am going to say this now. I said it on Twitter, and I'm going to say it again. I do not want to see Logan versus Tamina. I already stated that they're both practically identical because they can't, when they speak, they do not get my attention. And when they wrestle, it's not going to be good. So against each other, you can't put shit and shit together and think it's good. It, it, no, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's how I feel. And then Sammy and Owen see Dana Bryan backstage. Kevin Owens thanks Bryan for listening to his uh, his point. You know, hoping that you know they, that Owens would not be handcuffed. But in the end, Sammy then agrees with Shane. Uh, sorry, Daniel Bryan agrees with Shane, saying, "Yeah, uh, you know there will, there will be no interference. You know Shane got security to make sure that will not happen. Blah blah blah." And then. We go, uh, so we go by ringside, and then Kevin Owens is forced to put on the handcuffs. If he don't, well, he'll be suspended by Daniel Bryan. And the match happens between Orton and Zane. Good match, good main event. You know, Randy. I find it funny that Randy Orton main evented last week's show, and he's on this week's show too. And what's with Randy Orton? Randy Orton is having too much fun with his hair. I'm just saying, fam. I don't know what his hair of Randy Orton started to come through. I feel like he got surgery for that. No, I don't know. That's that's how I feel. But I, one, one more thing: is it is it really necessary for Randy Orton to do a superplex in almost every match he's in? It feels like a common theme every time he does a superplex. That's just me. So Kevin Owens got the bolt cutters from Sami Zayn, uh, able to cut the, the, the shit here, able to cut the handcuff off from the ring. He still got knocked off the ring by Randy Orton, still got beaten up. Sami Zayn tried to go for a schoolboy, kicked out. Uh, Randy Orton tried, and Randy Orton did the same thing and he got the W. But then Kevin Owens got in the ring, beat up Randy Orton along with Sami Zayn, and then do 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 Nakamura comes out. Helps Randy Orton, does some moves, hit the Kinshasa on Kevin Owens, and then Randy Orton hit an RKO on Sami Zayn and hits an RKO on Kevin Owens, and then same thing for uh, Sami Zayn from Nakamura with the Kinshasa, and I kind of knew this was going to happen. Nakamura is Randy Orton's tag team partner. It's plain and simple. And that's it. Back to live ends with that. Oh, and one more thing. Shane McMahon announces that at Clash of Champions, it will be Nakamura and Orton versus Zayn and KO. And if Zayn and KO do not get the job done, and I'm going to be special guest referee, if they lose, they're done, they're gone, they're fired. So, I don't like that at all. And that was SmackDown Live, so let's see what show won for the week. 
And that was WWE Bragging Rights, where I just reviewed both Raw and SmackDown Live, and I will determine which show was better of the week. And the winner is WWE Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw, able to get the job done again this week. Because SmackDown, they tried their best. They tried to at least uh, do something good on the show. We didn't have a Mahal or AJ Styles on SmackDown. But we did have Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn situation going on. But I think it was Shane McMahon getting involved. It's just like, uh, you know, but... Raw, we have Broken Matt Hardy, or Woken Matt Hardy with the Bray Wyatt thing going on. We had the story development between Joe with the shield and the bar going on. And we also had, you know, people surrounding them. Uh, we had people uh, just challenging the Intercontinental Champion, uh, Roman Reigns, trying to make the title more better than before. So, that's my thoughts as far as Raw and SmackDown go. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's, it's too long. I get my thoughts and I just review it. The way I review the show is way different than how everyone else reviews their show. I don't rush. I don't need to rush on a review, but I try not to do things or keep it too long. Uh, Monday Night Raw is a three-hour show, so I had to cover everything, but I enjoyed everything on Raw. On SmackDown, I had to skip some things, like the women's match and some other parts, but in the end, dude, Raw and SmackDown... I mean, Raw was a better show, just SmackDown, at least they did better than previous weeks, to be honest, but that is Bracket Rights, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys can, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, if you enjoyed it. All right, let me know in the comments, do you do you agree with me that Raw was better, or was SmackDown better to you? Or did you enjoy both shows? Let me know in the comments below, and also, do you like this concept of trying to bring it back? I'm really am, so hope you enjoyed it. Leave a like. Subscribe if you're new. Follow me on social media. Links are in the description box below. And don't be afraid to check out my channel. Because I will be uploading WWE Universe modes as far as SmackDown and NXT. And then the Elimination Chamber all this week on this channel. So I hope you guys will enjoy all of that. And I'll see you guys for the 7 Days Podcast this week as well. And I'm out. Later.